everyone, welcome to the best of Series 8. You know what? I can't believe it's the end of the season, the end of the series, the end of our fishing season too. <laughs> yeah, that's a cold breeze coming down from the mountains. All the lakes are racing over at the end. Yeah, it's time. Time to watch videos yeah, again. that's right. <laughs> you know we're going to change it up this year, the way we're going to present the show? Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll break it up in by show. We'll actually show show number one right through to show number 12 and show you all the best highlights from each one. So we get to start with the Raft River, one of my favorite places oh. to go fishing egg patterns. Egg patterns and elven patterns. Fantastic. What about a bench? Uh, you know what? I think we'll do a bench and I think we'll do a real special fly on the bench. So you got to stick around and see what I'm going to tie. Okay, everybody wants to see the bench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't go away. We'll be right back with the Raft River on the best of Series 8. Ah, oh, the Raft River. Near Clearwater in British Columbia, it's a unique experience we learned about three years ago. Well, the neat thing about the raft is it's got the good salmon runs up there. All the salmon go up to spawn, and we get the good trout following them up. On your way there, make sure you stop at Steve Jennings' Little Fort Fly and Tackle, because you can pick up the ultimate alevin, you can pick up all the egg patterns, because he's got them all there. And he can get you to the Clearwater River too, which is another excellent river in that same area. Not only are the fish here really colorful, beautiful fish, they're also huge. You can also get your share of dollies as well. But when you go up to the raft, you always have to make sure to bring your share of good elven patterns, egg patterns, and some good grub patterns. White Lake is one of the most known and maybe one of the best fisheries there are in BC. And the real nice thing about it is it has easy access. Two boat launches, a little bit of camping, real easy access. But you know it's a tough lake to fish. You don't always go there and have great fishing, but the reward is that you can catch some big fish. What makes White Lake so special to me is the clarity of the water. You can go in there and you can actually stalk the fish by seeing them. You got the great shoal areas too that go down the whole one side of the lake and each end of the lake. And yeah, it's sight fishing. You actually can see the fish and sometimes fish right to them. The main thing about White Lake is have some chronomid patterns because it is a phenomenal chronomid lake. They are great hatches. If you've never had a chance to fish at a trophy lake, you are really missing out. Yo, know, Brent Schlenker from Cypress Fly Fishing, he took us into some of the, the hog lakes of Medicine Hat, and they were big fish. And the nice thing about this footage is I just like to sit back and watch it because it is phenomenal footage. Seeing eight to 10 pound fish jump out of the water, nothing beats it. You know, you go there and you can catch the fish of a lifetime, but you're gonna catch a whole bunch of fish of a lifetime. So sit back and just enjoy the footage. The Columbia River flows through our hometown of Trail, so it's really our home waters. We get to fish it a lot. We're fortunate because the fish are huge in that river. This show was filmed earlier this year, and Dale got to fish it. I didn't get to. The, <laughs> the bum, he gets to fish the, the one close for me, but a great fishery. Oh, the best time to fish it too is during the spring and the fall. They lower the water right down, and all the big rainbows in the whole river move right into that shallow water, and you can pick them off with woolly buggers and sink tip lines. <laughs> You've been hanging around your brother too long fishing the woolly bugger all the oh, time. I just love that woolly bugger. The 
The Columbia really is one of those unknown fisheries, and I think the reason is is because it's really hard to fly fish. You have to be a good fly fisherman. If you go there in the spring, or you go there in the fall when the river's down, and if you're a good streamer fisherman, like to fish at Woolly Bugger, you have great opportunity to catch fish. Another great aspect of the Columbia River is the dry fly fishing. You get out there in the summer, nice warm days, you get the really good caddis hatches and mayfly hatches, and in the spring we get the really good flying ants. You also get the blue wing olives later on in the fall as well, which are coming back. The Columbia is really cleaning up, it's an excellent river. But not only do you get rainbows, you get cutthroats, you can go after dollies, you get brook trout in there, and if you want, you can actually catch kokanee on the fly. Ah, but you know us, we just like to target those big rainbows. Well, I hope everybody has enjoyed it so far. I don't know, have you? Yeah, it's been good. You know, the best part of doing the show is all winter long, we get to watch all the places that we fished the previous summer. Yes. So that's a good reason to carry a video camera with you. We're <laughs> lucky to have somebody else that does the filming for us. So don't go away, we'll be right back with some more. Here's a special little river that we were actually going to name the name of the river at the start of the season. We actually got some feedback from some people in the Revelstoke area that said, this is a real special little place. We don't think it can support the types of pressure, so we'd appreciate it if you don't name it. And you know what? We, we go to great lengths talking about whether we should name a place or not, and I'm glad we got the feedback from these people, and I'm also glad we would never named it. And it was really special, too, to go into this small stream. Beautiful West Slope cutthroat. Travis Lowe guided us into the area. Very nice little stream to fish. Something else we tried was putting the pitcher in pitcher so we could see the takes. We're talking cutthroats here. They like to come to the surface. So we tried to incorporate the pitcher in pitcher, and I think people liked it. And next series, we're going to see if we can do a little bit more of that. On this particular day, the cutthroat were taking the flab mayfly. Very similar to a green drake, nice and big. And you know cutthroats, they will take a dry fly readily. And I think some of the cutthroat we caught that day were about the same size as some of the <laughs> flies that we were using. <laughs> but you know, having the lightweight equipment made it that much more enjoyable to go in there and spend the day fishing. And it was just a lot of fun to go into a place like that. And you know, to me, that's what fly fishing is all about. We're fortunate this year because we had Brian Chan join us as part of our team here at Sport Fishing on the Fly. And one of the nice perks of having Brian along is we got into Douglas Lake Ranch and able to fish for those big trophy rainbows. Another trophy lake. <laughs> Some big fish. We fished there just before freeze up in the fall. And we're fishing with shrimp and we're fishing with leeches because that was what the food items that were left for the fish. And Brian told us as long as we fish them nice and slow, the water's fairly cold, we're going to catch a lot of fish. And we had a really nice day. You and I caught a lot of fish. We certainly did. <laughs> I think it was episode number 28 was the first show we did at Premier Lake. It was actually the very first show that we really took seriously here at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Well, we thought it'd be a good idea too to go back there for our 100th episode. And we decided to bring along Kelly Latch too. He was there in the early days, and we thought we'd bring him along for a little laugh. We had a good day of fishing there. We didn't catch any of the big fish that we did the first time around, but we still had a good day of fishing. Premier Lake will always be a good fishery. I mean, they put 65,000 fish in a year. How can it be bad? They manage it well. You know it's gonna be a good fishery. Definitely our surprise of the year was fishing at the Coeur d'Alene River. Well, we arrived there late one evening and we thought we'd check it out. We'd heard around that it was a really good fishery. And people told us, don't go there in the summer, head in the fall because the crowds are too immense in the summer. 
beautiful is all I can say. Breathtaking, some of the scenery up there. Lots of river to fish. There's a road that goes right up beside it. Lots of walk and wade. Lots of room for everybody, like you say, if you go in September when everybody else is out hunting. The Coeur d'Alene River is full of cutthroat and they're West Slope cutthroat. And the nice thing about the West Slope cuts is they love to take that dry fly. And you know what was neat about these fish too? is how hard they fought. I mean, more than any other West Slope we've caught, these fish were awesome fighters. Yeah, what was with that? We always wonder why they fought so good. Well, I don't know, we usually say rainbows are the good fighters. Well, these fish, they were good fighters. As you can see from the footage, these were some of the prettiest cutthroat we came across this year, probably because of that nice golden color they took on. They were very beautiful fish. You know what else was neat about this day is it was just you and me. Two guys, we went down, we spent the night down there, we went fishing, we did all the filming ourselves. Just had a blast. Turned out to be a pretty good show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing it. I'm not sure what more you could say about the Elk River other than I think it has become the premier cutthroat fishery in the world. Oh, it certainly has. And you know, it shows. It's really getting a lot of pressure. When we did the float, our traditional float from the cement plant down to Hosmer Bridge. We only came across about three to four boats, but in the summertime, it gets hit really hard. It is truly a destination place to come to, but you know what, look at the footage. Look at the size of the fish. It's sustaining it. it is, it's an amazing fishery. You know, there are always positives and negatives to a good fishery. The positive aspect is bringing a lot of money into the local economy. And the negative is it's impacting the local fishery. I think that's where the fish management comes in. And, and fisheries have done a great job, as you can see from the size of these fish. They're doing a great job of managing it. And there's enough fish there for everybody. Fifteen years ago, Dale and I fished the St. Mary's River. We went over there, heard about it, and at that time, Kaminko had their effluent plant, and they were actually sending the effluent down the St. Mary's River. And at that time, we caught lots of whitefish and the odd cutthroat. All of a sudden, in Fly Fisherman Magazine, we read about the St. Mary's River. All these cuts have come back. We went and fished it. It turned into a great fishery. It's another one of those fisheries that's been well managed and has done very well by being well managed. You know this trip we went down with Kelly Latch. Kelly's taken us down there a few times. It's not easy to walk and wade because there's not a lot of access to it so you actually need to float it. And with Kelly you're going to get lots of instruction throughout the day which is a good thing. He helps you out with lots of little pointers which are good. He guides a lot so he gets you into good stuff. Well the neat thing about that float that you guys did is you got the white water section. Really good for the kayaking and a little bit of fun for you too. You bet. It was a blast. Well, like I said earlier, I'm going to tie you up a real nice fly today, and it's called the belly button lint fly. It's got an unusual name, but the first time we saw it was down in the States. We were down there, and one of the guides actually showed it to us. We used it in tandem with another dry fly, and we couldn't keep the fish off. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 2487, size 16 to 20. We'll use some 8 odd all up done thread to tie with, some orange sow scout dubbing for the tail, some light olive sow scud dubbing for the body. We use the under fur of the polar bear hair for the wing and some light gray sow scud dubbing for the head. One of the most important materials you're going to have to tie this fly is the sow scud dubbing. Make sure you have a dispenser full of the sow scud because it's very critical that you use this material. To start the fly off, I'm actually going to take a small part of my orange sow scud dubbing and I'm going to tie it in for the tail. And again, this fly is very small, so keep your tail quite small. Now to shorten up the tail, I've tied it in, and what I'm going to do is just pull the material off to make this tail about an eighth of an inch long, and to keep it quite short, but don't cut it. I'm now going to take some of my light olive salsica dubbing, and I'm going to wrap it on my, my thread. Just form a nice little dubbing loop on my thread. And wrap it forward to form a nice thin body. Keep the body nice and thin. 
For the wing, I'm going to take some polar bear hair, and I'm not going to use the long strands of polar bear. I'm actually going to take the under fur. I'm just going to pull some off. All you need is a little bit. I'm just going to roll it in my hands, get it fairly stacked, cut it even, and then put it on the hook for the wing. Now that the wing is tied in, I have a whole bunch of extra material on the wing. What I'm going to do again is just pull it off the excess. I don't want to cut it at all. I want this to be a real buggy looking fly. The last step in the fly, I've taken some of my light gray dubbing. And again, I'm just going to dub it on my thread and wrap it forward to form the head. You know, the first time me and Grant saw this fly, we both laughed and looked at it and said it looked like a piece of belly button lint. So the name stuck. This fly works exceptionally well when used along with a larger dry fly, but only where regulations permit it. We like to treat ourselves to one tropical trip each year. In this particular show, we're down in Little Corn Island, which is off the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua. When we went down there, we expected to get some tarpon, some bonefish, and some barracuda. The tarpon weren't in, but we sure had a lot of fun catching the bonefish and the barracuda. Well, the neat thing about the barracuda, too, is if we didn't catch them, we weren't going to eat. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was very important to make sure we caught the barracuda. It's so voracious of a fish. You know, they have teeth on them that can chomp through anything. And I remember that little yellow tail that I had on, <laughs> he ate them right in half. Yeah. The barracuda ate him, and then yeah. we ate the barracuda. <laughs> well, that footage was a lot of fun to get for me. Well, I think for everybody, especially behind the scenes, <laughs> the camera guys get a, a bit of a chuckle oh, out yeah, of it, too. Sure. A lot of the stuff we can't show you, but some of the outtakes here, we can. And we're going to go in-depth how you fish for them. Like today, fishing here at the Raft River. Yeah, doing egg patterns. We were fishing those little evil... <laughs> <laughs> Brent, I was going to get him in here to tie us that fly that he's using. So fast. Okay, here we go again. A real nice pattern he's using, and it's called the... Brent's Blood Leech. Brent's Blood Blood. Okay, there you go. Brent's Brent's and welcome leech. to Sport Fishing on the Fly. Well, today we're at our home waters. Home waters? Oh, what was I going to say again? <laughs> <laughs> hope you like it so well, I hope everybody enjoys it so far. Have you? <laughs> doing the show, wanna... And I think that is awesome. It's you know the way we're doing the show, and we're just talking about <laughs> doing the show right now. <laughs> this here is called the bug bag. This is something we came up with here at Sport Fishing on the <laughs> just to alleviate some of the problems that you have when you're looking for materials. I think this is really revolutionary, and it's gonna uh, called the bug bag. That's what it's called, all right. The bug bag tying instructions you get a picture of what the final in uh. it was a great day we always say great but it was it was a great day uh. <laughs> stay efficient on the Coeur d'Alene River unbelievable cutthroat <laughs> action <laughs> yeah they're, they're really getting there now <laughs> well, hey everyone welcome to day <laughs> allow it to tail out and retrieve a fly like you would a, a woolly bahama too bad, like a woolly bugger. Oh, Mainly so. because it floats so high and it gives just a great float. My favorite oh. caddis pattern is because it does, because it sits so high and dry. Okay. Oh, there it is, the finished rubber leg attractor. Rubber leg, rubber leg to tie, okay. which they are. But if you have this one pattern in your box, it'll do the job. Take 95. <laughs> we haven't done this for a while. <laughs> I know. Okay, ready? Yeah. Well, there it is, the finished rubber leg. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You know, on a more serious note, I think the real reason people watch the shore, one of the main reasons anyway, is the bench segment. And we have the 12 flies that we tied all year for Series 8. We want to show everybody those flies now in case you ever, in case you miss them.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the best of Series 8 and the whole series as the year went on. It was a lot of fun doing it. You know, we get a lot of feedback from you to tell us what you want to see in the show, and that's really important. And I think as we go to Series 9 now, some of the things we're going to incorporate, having the little fly, the picture of the fly yeah. within it, seeing some of the takes, we're going to make sure we get some more of that stuff. Yeah, and I want to key on more of the instructional aspect again, show everybody what we're doing and how we're actually fishing. Yeah, the show's taking a little more serious nature now than it, it is. used to. Yeah. Oh, we're still going to have fun doing it, though. <laughs> we always will. Anyway, you get a chance to fish, make sure you take care. And conserve our waters, keep the fisheries the way they are. They're turning out excellent. They are, yeah. yeah. See you next time. We'll take you sport fishing on the fly.